Now you may ask, well, you know, why, you know, why the approach taken? Well, as usual, so often in pure math, it works. Right? Some, some research mathematician discovered it, and it got into the literature because it works. You know, this is, this is, this, and this is quite a powerful technique. As, uh, I'll show you, show you later once, once it's proven. All right, so let's start the proof. So uh, that's, it's, it's sort of in two parts. Um, well, let me make some general comments. Uh, like, how, how are we going about the proof? Well, we have two sets here, right? T, T of G is a set, T of H is a set. And what we will try to do is prove that these two sets, uh, given, given this, given this assumption, that these two sets are equal in size. So, how do you, uh, how do you prove two sets are the same? Well, well if, you, if, they're, if they're the same set, so yeah, that's, if you have two sets that are the same set, uh, then obviously they have the same size. So let's try to prove that this set is, that these two sets are the same, effectively. And how do you do that? Well, go way back to the first, second, second lecture, I think, on uh, sets. And to prove that uh, set A is the same as set B, uh, you do it in two parts. You use subsets. So you, you show that A is a subset of B, and you show that B is a subset of A. And therefore, the only way those two statements are compatible is if A equals B. Right? So we'll use, we'll use a strategy like that. Now, remember uh, from the lecture on sets, to prove that uh, A is a subset of B, so if you, if you want to prove something like this, okay, A is a subset of B, uh, you say, uh, for all x belonging to A implies that x belongs to B. Remember that from lecture two, the second lecture? Okay, so for all x, for all elements x that belong to A implies that they, you know, that the x's, they belong to B. And if that's true, then A is said to be a subset of B. Right, there's a bit of revision from lecture two. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll uh, do this kind of thing and we will show that this is a subset of that, in effect. Well, not quite, but... And this is a subset of that, in effect. So, uh, you know, with the two of them, with uh, A subset of B and B subset of A, or the equivalent, uh, you know, I'm, a being, I'm deliberately being a bit vague here. You'll, you'll see why you know, a bit later, but anyway. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do this kind of thing, using, using uh, two subset type... Uh, Arrangements like this, and then and therefore prove, or something closely related, that uh, the, these two sets are the same. These two sets are the same. All right. So, uh, with that uh, global strategy in mind, let's let's start. So let's um, let let X be a member of this set. It's one of it's one of these members in the set. So X belongs to T of G. Okay. So we just, just take one of these members. And, and uh, we're, we're assuming this G and H are uh, isomorphic. Okay? So, so in other words, there's a mapping F that maps G to H. Okay? And uh, this mapping F has the three properties, the usual, well-formed, uh, mm, bijective, and you know the F of M, F of N thing. Uh, it's hard to describe in words. Okay, so uh, let X be a member of this set, and then we start. Uh, now. Um, so our mapping function from G to H is F. Okay. So if we if we do this, if now uh, if we map X whatever it is, so here's G, here's H, 
So this is some x, so we'll map, map that into h. So this will then be f of x, right? So this, uh, I suppose, I guess, I suppose that's your subset t of g. Right? So x is a member of your subset. It's a member of this set, and it maps to f of x. Okay. So let's let's now take this integer n, your, your arbitrary integer that you, you're testing uh, whether this, the number uh, in this set is equal to the number in that set. So take your integer n. So let's just raise, raise this element here to the nth power. So you will get, you'll get something like this, f of x times f of x dot 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 f of x. Uh, and this, this will be like n times, okay? Now look, uh, this f, your mapping function, uh, these, these two groups are isomorphic, so this f uh, obeys the, the third criteria, criterion of, of, of this form, remember? M, remember that? Okay? It's uh, isomorphic, therefore this this holds. So uh, <coughs> f f of x times f of x is just f of x x. In other words, f of x squared. Okay. So if you have three of them, you'll have f of x times f of x times f of x is the same as f of x times f of x squared, which is f of x cubed. Okay, you following me? So uh, generalize that, and this, this will come out to being f of x to the n. Okay? Uh, now look, x to the n is uh, e. Right, e, well, it's the unit element of your group G, right? X again is E. So uh, we can write this as F to the unit element of G, okay? Because, you know, it, satisfi it satisfies this property. So therefore, this, this X uh, belongs to... Hold on. Because we've seen that to start with, right? Uh, okay, so so f of x raised to the nth power gives us f of the unit of g. Now, what is this? Um, can you remember a theorem? Um, not so long, not so far back. Uh, that if you map the unit of group G and it's a uh, isomorphic then that, uh, that E maps into the unit of H. So this, this is just D of H. Okay? All right? So, uh, so what, can, what can we conclude from that? All right, now look, look here. Um, yeah, there are quite a few steps in this reasoning. Now, now have a look at this. This f of x raised... Now, where, f of x, which group is it in, right? It's f of x, so it's in group H, okay? X, x is in group G. But f of x, well, that's, that's a, an element that got mapped to, right? So f of x lies in h, okay? f of x lies in h. And you raise it to the nth power, and what do you get? You get, you get the unit of h, okay? That means, think about it, that f of x is one of these y. That f of x lies in this set, right? Because, because if y is f of x, y to the n, or f of x to the n, is equal to the unit here, okay? Therefore, therefore, f of x is a member 
of this. Okay. All right. Uh, now, what can we conclude from that? Okay. Now, here's <laughs> here's uh, where I put in a couple of comments between the lines. Now we started. We started with this assumption, right? We assumed that x belonged to this set. Okay. Now, if f belongs to T of g, so if x belongs to T of g, it follows that f of x belongs to f of T of g. Why? Because this mapping is one to one. Right? It's uh, isomorphic, therefore the your mapping function here, f, f here, is one to one. Right? It's, uh, what's the term? Um, bijective. Right? If, uh, if you have an isomorphism, this f here has to be not just well formed and, and obeying this, but also has to be bijective. Bijective means one to one. Okay? So, uh, So if, if x belongs to this set, then uh, if you map it, um, each of these, you know, this, this, the, the f of x will belong to f of t of g. All right, uh, now what have we proven? Okay, so now, now let's do the, the subset thing. Uh, we'll, we'll do the first half of it. <coughs> okay. So if, if f of x belongs to f of tg, right, we then proved, so if, if, well put it this way, if x belongs to tg, f of x belongs to f of tg, right, all, all we do is just put an f here and an f here. You know, we, we map that and we map that. We map this element and we map this set of elements. Uh, so we get that. So if f of x belongs to f of tg, then f of x belongs to t of h. Well, that's of this form. Okay. Therefore, now I'll say I'll say it again. If f of x belongs to f of t g, then f of x belongs to t of h. Right. Therefore, 